think for me, if you look at the industry that I'm in, I'm in Manganese, we represent 80% of all reserves. And therefore, as a country, we should be taking this commodity as very, very important. And maybe even delay it as a strategic mineral resource because we represent 80% of world reserves, reserve, and it's a commodity that actually tracks steel. Where there's steel growth, infrastructure development, roads infrastructure, port development, you will see manganese in there because it's an ingredient that is very important to steel making. And therefore, as a country, if we had a leadership that actually looks at it that way, you would have a plan in place in terms of how, you know, for instance, you regulate, beneficiate. For instance, the country in terms of the NDP, they talk about beneficiation, but there's no support structure to actually beneficiate. Um, we see a lot of ore being shipped outside. We see a lot of smelters by manganese players in countries like Malaysia. And for me, it's actually saying you're exporting jobs to Malaysia and actually not encouraging you know, the creation of jobs in South Africa. So if there was a leadership that has looked at it from a manganese sector point of view, you'd actually create more jobs because you wouldn't have smelters that are shut down that are running at 25% as we speak, those that are in the country. And then out of, I think, four manganese players have their smelters in Malaysia. So you, you, you'd really see that, yeah, there is no leadership. Another issue that plagues the industry is the contentious mining charter. There has been a new draft that has been released and consultations um, are being held with various industry players. Your thoughts on the most recent draft and really um, does it improve sentiment um, within the industry? I, th I think from where I'm sitting as a B player, um, it does in a way because I'm not affected by it. Um, some of the elements that were uh, contentious, people are trying to, to deal with it, and uh, the mining um, king, the Minerals Council, is actually you know, representing us to try and negotiate the charter. For me, it's not about whether the charter is correct or not, it's about at least now uh, there's, you know, um, consultation, because the last charter, we were never consulted when it was actually, you know, gazetted. So now, at least we can feel that, you know, we are part of it. There's been, um, the new minister has been going to the Northern Cape and everywhere else, trying to consult with communities and mining companies to say, what are your views? And putting your views in a box or in a basket, at least you know that somebody is listening. What would you say, um, it was also spoken about that um, there's been a, a lack of investment within the industry and what would you say are the immediate um, actions that need to be um, taken to uh, re-engage local and um, international investors? I think government must get their house in order. And I'm saying this because if you look at, I'll make an example about me. I've pumped nine billion into uh, infrastructure in the Northern Cape. Um, I have a sense and view that government doesn't care. The, the right hand does not know what the left hand is doing. Yes, I've invested, but do I get the support that I want in terms of your, you know, your, your rail infrastructure? I've built a rail, 18 kilometers of rail. I've built a rapid loadout station, your TIPLA, but I actually don't get the support that I think I should be getting from Transnet, but I'm also not getting the support that I should be getting from an ESCOM point of view. I'm a strategic infrastructure, three. Therefore means that the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Committee should be looking at my project as a special project, but I'm not actually get getting the benefits. I struggle like everyone else, and sometimes shutting down a Sinta plant for three months simply because the electricity costs are just too high you know, says a lot about not having a clear plan in terms of how to support beneficiation. Because for me to start the Sinta plant, you're taking it from zero to 1,200 degrees, and therefore it gathers a lot of electricity, and therefore what do we do? You know, uh, do I have to pay a, a monthly, you know, cost of nine million for electricity? I cannot afford that. I'm, I'm a small company, you know, I have debt that I need to repay to the banks that actually, you know, gave me the money to put this infrastructure. But I'm not actually getting the support that I should be getting from government. And for me, 
any investment, whether it's foreign direct investment, you know, comes into a country simply because um, the government has actually created conditions that are conducive to doing business in South Africa. We see it on TV, but we never see it on the ground. I can tell you, I'm leading in terms of beneficiation in the country, having built the largest manganese cinder plant in terms of output, 3.7 million tons in the world, I'm not seeing that support.